Harry and Meghan, the dynamic duo of modern royalty, are back with another creative venture. This time, they take us into the breathtakingly elite world of Polo with their new five-part Doka series, Polo. From their Montecito mansion, the couple continues to churn out content that promises to inform and inspire, despite mixed reviews of their previous projects. Two years ago, they launched their $100 million Netflix deal with the six-part Harry and Meghan miniseries. Since then, they've produced a decent documentary on Harry's Invictus Games and a less impressive one on leadership. Their $20 million Archetypes podcast for Spotify was scrapped after just 13 episodes, and a much-talked-about Meghan Cookery show never materialized. But none of these setbacks have dampened their spirits. Polo promises to pull back the curtain on the grit and passion of the sport. The series opens with a bold claim, we're about to witness one of the most thrilling sports imaginable. The show teases us with images of dirty, sweaty, sexy boys riding horses, dramatic tension, and a man in a fuchsia pink polo shirt smashing a cool box in a fit of rage. It sounds perfect for a rainy day binge watch. The drama centers around the build-up to the World Cup in Florida. Here, slim women with smooth faces cheer on their muscular menfolk, who take the sport very seriously. One player likens the danger of polo to that of a fireman or marine, declaring, our life is on the line every time we get out there. Another player passionately states, polo is not just a sport. Polo is a lifestyle. We eat. We breathe, we sleep polo. The players are depicted as hardworking and dedicated, with ripped physiques, white teeth, strong forearms, expensive watches, and Louis Vuitton hold dolls. We see them lifting weights, skydiving, deep sea fishing, and driving luxury cars, all set to dramatic music. The series introduces us to Tim Dutta, a 22 year old funded by his overbearing dad who is always shouting, we're here for one thing and that's to win. Despite his father's pressure, Tim genuinely loves his horses. We also meet Adolfo Cambieso, the Michael Jordan of Polo, and Louis de Valiex, the loathsome patron and player of a team called La Fay. Louis is known for his temper, smashing cool boxes, and not caring much about his ponies. He even admits... I don't even know what my horse's names are. It's curious that Harry and Meghan were so eager to share this world with us. Despite criticism that Polo is elitist, a carbon disaster, and not always kind to the ponies, Meghan reportedly adores the Polo scene. According to Harry's best friend and fellow Polo player, Nacho Figueres, it's always been Harry's dream to share what it takes to be a competitive Polo player with the world. While Harry and Meghan were very hands-on in the making of the series, they don't appear much on screen. Harry makes a five-second cameo in the third minute, and the couple appears briefly together in episode five. Their polo pals do their best to fill the void, explaining the basics of the game and strutting around in tight trousers, popping confetti-filled balloons, and making ridiculous comments like polo gives me hope that I can accomplish something and he was handmade by God to play polo. Despite its potential, Polo falls flat. It could have been a fun, guilty pleasure TV show, a mashup of rivals, selling Sunset, and Made in Wrexham. Instead, it plods along, failing to deliver on its promise of content that informs and gives hope. So, there you have it, a peek into the glamorous yet gritty world of Polo, courtesy of Harry and Meghan. Whether you're a fan of the sport or just curious about the lives of the elite, Polo offers a unique glimpse into a world few of us will ever experience. Stay tuned for more reviews and insights into the latest in entertainment.